Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> Been doing a lot of shop upgrades here. I'll talk about first. Um, there's a lot of different things that uh, I just needed to improve. The backsplash to both lays were getting really bad. Cutting fluid all over them and there were two separate ones. I wanted to make an entire length of it. Here's a picture of what it looks like now. But uh, I finally, uh, my wood supply was down to zero and it's been that way for a long time. So I finally went to uh, the lumber yard, picked up an eight foot by four foot, half inch thick sheet of MDF. And yes, the prices have gone up. It used to be about $23, $24, dollars now for this sheet. And I doubt whether the prices will ever go back down, watch. So, okay, I upgraded that. It looks great. I'm thrilled with it. Next up, the um, scrap drawer for leftover cut-off metal supplies. It was getting really heavy. It's getting too heavy for this wood drawer. So I had to make two trays. Here's a picture of them. So now uh, all the scrap has been relocated. The right side there is aluminum. The left side, scrap steel, it's kind of a Heinz 57, some of it's 1144, 1018, 12L, whatever. Okay, so I did that. Next up, since I now have a larger um, 3018, I can do something serious. So my 5C collar drawer was a wreck. Here's a picture of the new improved drawer. Um, and you can see there's, well, the, the entire top two rows is all the metric. The bottom two is imperial, and I go up to one inch. The three extra spots there, um, Randy Richard said everybody has to have an emergency 5C collet. So I ordered uh, a nylon one, which will go into one hole. And I also ordered a steel one, which will go in the next hole, and I have a spare one spare hole. Um, the only reason I ordered the steel emergency collet is because it was a sixteenth and I only go down to one eighth and it would cost the same amount um, to buy just a 5C sixteenth so I might as well just get an emergency and I can use it as a sixteenth if I need it. So um, here's a short little clip of um, showing the 3018 making the rack well here it is in action the two linear rods have been removed the clamps for the rods have been removed it's 500 millimeters wide 500 millimeters deep just a plain piece of NDF so the aluminum table is gone which saves a lot of money for the manufacturer Aluminum plate is supporting the z-axis plastic hard um, Rollers with bearings in them from Banggood. There's like ten of them for four dollars and There is less vibration than it had before It's more solid even though I lengthened it a lot of dust here Oh, you blew it all over so I'm very pleased with it and uh, I can't believe FreeCAD. I used to just completely drill out the middle, creating a lot of swarf. I decided to just do a face job on the outside of it. This is a 5C collet rack I'm making. <clears throat> this is going to take about two hours. It used to take all day, you know, a good six hours. But for some reason it just it doesn't want to just completely do one hole at a time you can see it's just skipping it's taking ten thousands cut it's going down ten thousands at a time a lot less wharf therefore a lot less um, me having to keep vacuuming it as it's getting rid of the whole hole so all in all this is great this was well worth the um, time and money to do the upgrade and this bit is definitely um, the best one I've yet to have uh, for MDF. 
It's single flute. It looks like a drill bit. It does, uh, where a drill bit where you just remove one of the flutes. So it's more like a drill and it just goes right down in. And the helix is so high, such an angle, that it just pulls everything out of its way, out of the hole, getting it out of its way as it cuts. You can see I am climb milling right now, which usually with a regular end mill, it would choke, but not with this guy there. It just went down another 10. So it takes me 17 and a half minutes to go down 100 thousandths. So this is far faster than it's ever been. Last up, when I started this hobby, I just had the lathe and I just got the ER32 collet chuck on the lathe. I ordered a small set of collets from um, Little Machine Chop. Later on, I realized, gee, I need everything. So I bought all the Imperial, all the metric. And so I had this set kicking around. Then uh, I said before in another video, I ordered um, high precision standard collets, you know, the quarter inch, half inch, three eighths, so on. So now I had another set kicking around. So I decided, here's a picture of it, to make this little tray that holds all the extra pieces. And in there, bottom left, I think it is, there is a seven millimeter. How I wound up with that extra, I have no clue, but. Okay, so I figured just for fun, it's kind of a quick little thing making um, I did upgrade my um, thread protectors a lot of people make them where they just split it so it clamps uh, on the threads I just have a simple method I run the screw or whatever in there put a nut on it crank it down done so um, here's a little bit of machining and making uh, a thread protector hope you enjoy see you next time Okay, let's try and get close up with the camera here, get everything. Big learning curve. First, the um, base that I made for the arm, no friction, so the arm just kept moving by itself. Second, the um, there's a ball at the end of the arm that the whole thing, camera, rotates on. They never um, uh, thread locked or whatever. Wow, geez, why can't I think now? Use Loctite on the threads. It kept coming loose and the camera kept rotating. Next, you cannot wear the microphone when you're doing this because you move and so does the camera. The light, too. I figured out um, where to put the light. It's crazy. The other thing is always have everything you need right here to do the job because if you don't, you'll be running all over the place wasting time. <clears throat> so, all right, I've already marked this guy. I use a just a sharpie, you know, it's a big big tip on it. I mark how far in I've got to do, uh, turn it, clean up the outside. I've already marked my drill bit, how deep I need to go. This guy's already got a hole in it, or a center piece from the uh, previous part that I made. Normally, I would use a spotting drill this is a spotting drill and this is a center drill I see a lot of people using this to start the drill this is for doing the hole in your live center gives you the clearance for the point and gives you the angle of the uh, center live center or dead center this is what's really used to keep your drill bit from walking when you start it so you know, also, yeah, I had to remove the plastic shield that's on this machine because it was in the way. So, we're ready to go here, and I got everything prepped. So, I just have to drill it out. This is going to be, what, a quarter, I think it was 28, what's that, what do I have here? Quarter 20. Thread save. Alright, so, simple, just go in. And I do use, you just saw me using my special um, two parts motor oil, no, it's three parts motor oil to one part kerosene, and it works really nice. But I do like using Tap Magic for aluminum, so they do make that specifically. You'll see the difference in the chips, watch. 
So look for tap magic, big bold text current says aluminum. And let's back it up, put some of that stuff in there, huh? Uh yes. Tap magic bold oh, oh, oh. thing see to get it in there. Yeah, the other thing is I had the camera right on top and it was just in my way. I couldn't work. So I keep it off to the side now so I can see what I'm doing. So chips are coming out now in one long stream. Beautiful stuff. I use it for tapping and drilling aluminum. the mark right there all right so I've got it let me get rid of some of this stuff uh, there okay so set up now for threading and this is the YG1 tap that I love <laughs> that I talked about a number of times So I'm just going to go in until this thing spins, so I'm not tightening it down that much. <clears throat> Load it with the tap magic. Good. And him. You get to see how the chips come out. And again, you don't need a, a taper tap or anything to start the hole. This thing just goes. Oh, i got to put it in low gear. There. Ready to go. There it goes, straight in. There. Just hit bottom. I'm surprised it didn't start spinning in the chuck, but... Alright, so now, it's a matter of... Um, you should just clean that sucker up. Uh, just now I'm going to turn the outside and then part it off. So, get rid of the tail stock. And where is my... There it is. These are the Matisse MTs that I love for aluminum here. Stick that in there. Tighten it down. Angle it. Where's my mark? Oh, there's the mark. Go back to high speed. And I'm going to use the stepper drive that I have on this machine to um, do this. And you'll see there's like not much run out on this thing. I'm just going to go in a few thousands and that's a pretty good finish, I think. There's a camera here, I get my hand around for lubrication for my um, parting it off. Uh, and I'm have my part here to set it. Previously too, I had touched up my parting tool, so it was not on rotational center. It was grabbing a lot. So hopefully I've got it set. Let's see. Also with the camera off to the side, I can see that I'm square with the parting tool. I couldn't see it before because I have to look straight down. Alright, so straight down. That looks straight. Back it up. And bring it over someplace here and lock it. And how deep am I? I bring it in some. Uh, close. I can also use my magnifying glass to see what I'm doing. Perfect. Right there. Gonna part it off, right? Yeah, I've done everything. So here we go, huh? I'm not sure if you guys can 
see the chips coming off and that just curls right off. Yeah, it sounds a lot different, so I think I've got the height set right now. And eventually I will use the tap magic for this. Right now I'm just using the motor oil. Actually, I'm going to switch to the tap right now. There it is. Because <clears throat> I can get it in the groove and it goes in the sidewall. Can you guys see? No, you can't. I'm completely in the way, huh? Alright, well, this would be a better view. Eesh. I can back up over here, maybe. There, finally. Alright, done. So I'm going to just set up to face it off. Set up for facing. Hopefully the reflections aren't really bad. <laughs> okay, now move it in. Bring it over and lock it down. Huh? Oh, more of an angle than that. There, that's fine. Alright, angle chamfer. I'm going to get to try the other chamfer for a moment. Okay, look at that boy. Alright, I'm going to try the other chamfer tool. I've got this guy set up specifically to do it. I can do the threads and that. Huh? That's done. Bring him square. Do the outside. Get my magnifying glass over so you see just how much I'm doing. Beautiful. And bring it in for the threads. Boy, I can see that did a nice job in there. Flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. Please flip it around. He's already faced off. So, in for the threads. It does a nice job, I'll tell you that. And there it is, one thread protector, ready to go for either machine. Just need to blow it out, get the junk out, and I'm done.